The last time I was in Paris, I was maybe 10. Things looked different back then, not because they've actually changed, more so just because I noticed different things. The last time I was here, I remember being whisked away from attraction to attraction. First the Eiffel Tower, then the Louvre, Arc de Triomphe, Sacré-Cœur, I could go on. This time, I'm doing it a little different. First of all, I'm here for a longer time, so I get to slow down. And second, I know from life experience that I don't have to go to the top of the Eiffel Tower to feel like I'm living. Anyways, the reason why I'm here is because I just need a break. I felt overwhelmed almost every single day back in school working on my film and thinking about what the hell I want to do with my career. And I know I'm not the only one feeling this way. Wherever you are, however you're feeling, I hope that you can take this time with me to just relax and look at cool things that have been color corrected and carefully curated and romanticized, but cool nevertheless. So yeah, let me take you around Paris. Recently, I bought a new sketchbook and some color pencils and slowly I've been filling up the pages. Ever since I started thinking about art as a serious career, I've started to think more in terms of what can I draw to make my portfolio stand out and less in terms of what are my impulses right now? What do I like to draw? I'll say this, focusing on the former has lessened my job anxiety, but on the other hand, art isn't as fun as it used to be. The pressure I feel to make good work has led to a lot of stress. With this sketchbook, I've been trying to do more of the latter, draw what I want. If I want to draw pretty flowers with no meaning behind them whatsoever, I will do that. Sometimes my perfectionistic tendencies will take over and pages will be more nicely composed. Other times I'll doodle from one place to the next, putting down whatever comes to mind. The best days are when I stumble into a state of flow. Hours will pass and I won't notice. I grew up around here, spent a lot of time here, and so when I look at this map filled with an ungodly number of one-way streets and paths that have no respect for cardinal directions, I am absolutely thrilled. These maps do tell a bit of a story. One is organic and meandering, the other is structured and efficient. And while I'm sure individual lifestyles vary wildly, I do get a strong sense that the cultures follow these patterns. In Paris, at least, I feel that the quality of life is taken more seriously. I can sit in a cafe for hours and not have to worry about getting kicked out without buying another drink. Public transportation is decent and streets prioritize people over cars. There are bookstores everywhere, parks everywhere, cafes spill onto the streets. I even imagine being a pigeon isn't so bad if you get to feast on leftover brioche. On Bastille Day, I went to the Louvre. When I was 10, I was most excited to see the Mona Lisa. I wanted to see if her eyes would follow me across the room. And when we finally came face to face, which was hard because there were many bigger, taller people in front of me, I remember thinking, wow, she is smaller than I thought. Why is she such a big deal? And this is the only thought I remember having in the Louvre. Today, I am over twice as old and know a lot more about art history. Having that bit of context has changed the way I look through museums, and this time, Mona wasn't the star of my show. I did see her again, though, from a distance. We made eye contact, but I didn't wait in line to say hi. There was a part of me that felt comforted that 10 years later, nothing about her had changed. And the next time we'd see each other, maybe in another 10 years, it would be in the same room and she'd have the same smile with the same eyes. There were a few more museums I visited, Musée Carnavalet, which is dedicated to Parisian history, and Musée d'Orsay, which most famously houses a lot of Impressionist work. But my favorite by far was the Musée des Arts et Métiers, the Museum of Technological Innovation. It's definitely a lot quieter than the Louvre, with more space to breathe. Art et Métier is divided into several sections, measurement, materials, construction, communication, energy, mechanics, and transportation. Each room is more or less arranged chronologically with the earliest inventions at the start and modern life at the end. Here's the reflection I wrote down later that week. I watched how the phonographs and automatons and hydrometers of their era shed their gilded ornaments and became instruments of industry the color of coal. 
then again watched as they shed their weight to become sleek, ubiquitous, powerful hardware hidden from view. When I look at my phone, a device with a calculator, camera, and global encyclopedia all tucked into one, I feel that I am already living far in the future. The modern stuff doesn't draw nearly as much attention as the older stuff. Products nowadays just feel more disposable. But I like to look at them because it's strange for me to see them in this context, displayed like priceless possessions behind glass. It makes me wonder, in a hundred years, how will our lives be understood? What will be left of us? I hope it's not just trash. As I've gotten older, I've become more wary of big, flashy events and more appreciative of smaller moments, especially when I'm with good company or good food. The Louvre is magnificent, the Pantheon impressive, but so is a glass of apricot juice on a hot day. Here's a list of other small things I love. Sitting by the window in the mornings. Cobblestone. This brand of lemon yogurt. 9 p.m. sunsets. Bookshops by the sun. These thrifted clothes that I got for 5 to 10 euros. The curvature of metro stations. Easy to access Asian grocery markets. Knowing that I can buy the same sauces I used to cook at home is very comforting. And to keep things balanced, here is a list of things I hate. Heat. Air pollution. Bees landing on my tartine. Anxiety when speaking a foreign language. The feeling that even if you wanted to live here, you'd never belong. The time I was fined 35 euros for not understanding the transportation system. When your travels are coming to a close and your days are numbered. Having said all of this, I've had a pretty good time, more than I could have hoped for. I haven't actually gone to see the Eiffel Tower yet, despite being here for a while, so who knows, maybe I'll do that next. Anyways, that's it for now. Thank you, as always, for coming along. It always means a lot.